you know that the first trains were pulled by horses? Join us today as we explore the B&O Railroad Museum in Baltimore, Maryland. And later today, we'll be interviewing the executive director of the B&O Museum, Chris Holen. The B&O Railroad started in 1827 with its first charter to begin a railroad in America. Three years later, in 1830, Peter Cooper invented the Tom Thumb. America's first locomotive built in the U.S. Cooper raced it against a horse who won because of a mechanical malfunction. In 1835, the B&O Railroad was the first railroad to enter the nation's capital, and 17 years later, in 1852, it reached its original charter destination, the Ohio River. Through late September and early October in 1927, the B&O Railroad celebrated 100 years of the railroad with its centennial celebration, the Fair of the Iron Horse, a parade of B&O locomotives that were assembled in the order of their development throughout the years. As we stated earlier, trains started out as horse-drawn coaches on tracks. The Pioneer, an early American locomotive, was a coach built with rims on the wheels to be guided and pulled by a horse. After that was steam power trains. The York locomotive was the first steam engine that burned coal with a vertical boiler. This type of train were nicknamed grasshoppers because the boiler would go up and down like the legs of a grasshopper. From 1837 to 1860, grasshoppers, or the York locomotives, were replaced with more powerful ones that had horizontal boilers. The Lafayette was the first true passenger engine that used a horizontal boiler. After the steam power generation of trains came the electric powered trains, such as the B&O No. 10, which was manufactured in 1909 by General Electric. The B&O decided to use electricity, which was a new form of power for the railroads. Originally, they were operated by horses because of an 1831 Sydney ordinance prohibiting steam power on the streets. And finally, diesel powered locomotives, such as the B&A No. 50, which are the most commonly used locomotives today. The B&A No. 50 was manufactured in 1950 by General Electric. Then, No. 50 was purchased by the Baltimore and Annapolis Railroad the same year. The diesel-powered locomotive was eventually forced into retirement due to engine problems in the late 1900s. Opened in 1887, the B&A Railroad was a small line that ran between Baltimore and Annapolis. Interesting fact, did you know that Bisquick was originally created on the railroads? Hi, I'm Courtney Anderson. Hi, Courtney. I'm Dana. Um, could you tell me a little bit about this exhibit here? Sure. Uh, this is the Atlantic uh, locomotive. It's part of the early American collection that we have here at the B&O uh, Railroad Museum. This collection uh, dates back to when railroading started in America, which was 1828. These locomotives also uh, were brought back for, uh, for the 100th anniversary of the B&O. It was their centenary uh, celebration in, uh, in 1927. So they were part of a parade called the Fair of the Iron Horse. These locomotives were nicknamed grasshoppers. And the reason they were called grasshoppers is because their pistons would go up and down, similar to what the legs of a grasshopper would do. So, okay. Are we ready to move on to the next one? Sure. So this is the Memnon locomotive. Uh, this was a Civil War workhorse because we are actually in the Civil War Railroad exhibit called The War Came By Train. This is the largest Civil War Railroad exhibit in the world. There are eight Civil War locomotives and rail cars just in this collection alone. People come from all over just to see this railroad collection. But you can also see how technology changed in the build, building of the locomotives from, from the ones we just saw like the Atlantic that was, you know, 18, you know, 30. Now we're 1861. And this locomotive, the Mennon, was called the Workhorse. And it actually was part of the Civil War. These locomotives stood participants in the Civil War. So just to give you an idea. And uh, you can see how the, how the railroad suffered during the Civil War. It was, uh, Gentlemen like Captain John Sharp there and Stonewall Jackson created havoc to the B&O Railroad and they actually stole the B&O locomotives and moved them south. Uh, How did they manage to do that? They actually uh, captured 56 locomotives and over 300 rail cars. They disassembled them put them on wagons and actually moved them with the you know, pulled by horses 
uh, like further south into the south uh, and was trying to use them for the southern railroads. Um, but they caused major havoc. Uh, and President John Wark Garrett, who was president during the B&O, he became a huge union uh, supporter because of that. And he and President Abraham Lincoln became uh, pretty good buddies because of that, because the, uh, the B&O employees and the, the Telegraph were able to report back to the Union cause as to what the Southerners, the Confederates, were doing during wartime. Civil War also, um, because of the, B, the way the B&O uh, railroad tracks were aligned, that's why West Virginia is now a state. When the Civil War was going on, West Virginia wasn't even a state, it was part of Virginia. So it even formed West Virginia statehood. Oh, wow. So this is also locomotives that served in, during the American Civil War. Um, but you can see that these locomotives are the locomotives we probably identify with as steam locomotives. They're beautiful, they're works of art in themselves. Uh, they're very detailed painting. Uh, so this is kind of the locomotives the steam locomotives that Americans fell in love with. This locomotive has a lot of historical significance and it's probably one of the B&O's uh, fan favorite uh, because uh, not only was it the train that took President Abraham Lincoln to his inaugural, it's kind of a celebrity. It, it's the celebrity. It's been in a lot of major motion pictures. Uh, for example, like Wild Wild West with Will Smith, uh, Tuck Everlasting, Gods and Generals, Amistad, um, also Rain Tree Crown, uh, County with Elizabeth Taylor, um, and uh, Great Locomotive Chase. So it has a very long uh, major motion picture history to it as well. Oh, what was the name of this one again? This is called the B&O Number 25, the William Mason. Oh, uh, how was it named? Well, it. All trains have numbers, uh, so it was given number 25 based on the, the place where it was, you know, like the order it was built in. William Mason was actually one of uh, the engineers uh, that, uh, that it's named after. Okay. So, so that's where it came, the name William Mason comes from. Okay. okay. Are you ready to go? Okay. This locomotive is engine number one, and it was the longest running steam engine, uh, which is pretty special. And the great thing about this locomotive is, is that you can actually go inside of it. We've got about 26 locomotives and rail cars here at the museum that you can actually go inside of and experience. So we're gonna walk inside the cab of this locomotive, and you're gonna see and feel uh, what it was like to actually be an engineer of a train. So as you can see, the cab has uh, all kinds of controls and knobs, and it's, it's awesome for anybody to visit us because they can actually touch those knobs, feel those handles. Uh, you can set up here, you can feel the vibration of what it was like to drive a locomotive up a mountain, probably the Allegheny Mountains from this region. Uh, but people love to come, kids of all ages, will uh, actually sit here and kind of experience what it was like to be a train engineer and drive the locomotive up a mountain. I find this really cool. I want to go into all 26. <laughs> this rail car here actually is the postage car. Um, you know, it, the railroad is what uh, delivered mail to everybody, you know, uh, long before we had, uh, you know, automobiles. Uh, so we can go in this one and we can actually go in the baggage department where they stored all the bags of mail and then the other portion of the car we can go in where they sorted the mail. So this is the baggage portion of the car. Uh, this is where all the mail was kept in, in mail bags uh, and they were, they were actually ready to be dropped off at certain towns along the railroad's line. Uh, catch you on the fly, if you've ever heard that phrase, came from, from delivering the mail by, by railroad because they would hang the mail on a hook 
and as the train came by, they would grab the bag. So catch you on the fly came from that, which is pretty interesting. We could go on to the front, top, uh, to the front part of the car where you'll see how they sorted the mail. <clears throat> portion of the car allows our uh, visitors to see what it was like to uh, actually sort the mail on the rail car. And they would sort it into the different bags that would get delivered and put on the hook for them to drop off at certain towns. So this is totally different in today's era. They don't do that at the post office any longer. Everything's kind of done by machines. So, this was all done by hand when you were traveling on the railroad. So this car behind me represents the Victorian era of traveling on the B&O. Um, you know, if you traveled on the B&O and you rode in this car, which was called the Royal Blue, it ran up from Washington, D.C. to New York, was its main uh, carrier line. Uh, and if you, tr if you actually was a passenger, you, were, you, you probably had quite a bit of money. It was for the affluent society that could ride on the B&O's Royal Blue. Uh, but, um, you know, very luxurious uh, rail travel uh, during that Victorian age. Um, how do you guys decide like what uh, carts that people can go in inside of and can't? Uh, well, everything here at the museum is uh, a very comprehensive railroad collection. So it, it, what that means is it's either the first, best, last, or only of its kind. Obviously, we try to open up as much of the collection that we can, uh, but we do have to preserve the collection's um, history. Uh, you know, something like this car, the, it, you know, it has very fragile uh, upholstery uh, and details. So, you know, unfortunately, we cannot open that up for, for the public to actually walk through every day. Okay. Uh, but that's what that's why, you know, because it's the the the, the seats, uh, all the details, very delicate, very delicate. Okay. Okay. This locomotive is the uh, Chesapeake and Ohio 1604. Uh, it's the largest locomotive that ever ran on the b &O railroad system. Uh, and the reason it's because it's a Chesapeake and Ohio is because Chesapeake and Ohio observed the B&O Railroad. Uh, but there's only two in existence. This one that you're, that you're seeing in front of us, the other one's at the Henry Ford Museum uh, in Michigan. Uh, but it, if you set it up in our roundhouse, it would go all the way to the top of the cupola. So it's as long as the building that we're standing in. Uh, it was made to actually run um, and pull uh, locomotives and rail cars uh, over the Allegheny Mountains. That was its purpose. And we're going to go inside of it and you can look out of the window to see what it was like to be an engineer to drive this train. You can't even see to the end of the of the train. So it's pretty amazing in itself. So come on up. So if you want, go right on in, and then if you come and look out this window, that's how the engineer had to drive the train. They had to hold their head out the window to see where they were going. So you just had to hope that it stayed on the track. You, you can't even really see to the end of the locomotive, but that's, if you were driving the train, you would have to look out the window to, to see. So you had to hope that it was staying on track for you. But this is the largest locomotive, and again, it is, a fan favorite here at the B&O. We have people that come from all over to see this locomotive. Uh, and it's amazing that there's two still in existence. I'm just thinking of how confusing it would be. There's so many I, different knobs. I know. Our visitors do like that they can actually touch the knobs, turn the knobs. You know, it's very hands-on. And uh, I think in today's world, Museums need to be very hands-on, so we're, we're always happy to open up as much of the collection that we can for visitors to, to get immerse, an immersive experience from. This is our, the museum's executive director, Chris Holland. Hey, uh, my name's Courtney Anderson, and I was wondering if I can ask you um, some questions about this place. Her, absolutely, it's nice to meet you. You too. 
Uh, so my first question is, what is um, B&O's mission here? Uh, the B&O Railroad's mission is to preserve the legacy of American railroading as long as the collection. Uh, she had introduced you as the executive director. Uh, what, is, what do you do here um, as that responsibility? So as the executive director, I am ultimately responsible for the museum, um, ensuring that we continue forward on our mission of both preserving and protecting the legacy, and also making sure that we remain uh, financially viable, that we uh, scale our education programs, that we attract visitors. Um, so I oversee essentially all of our responsibilities here. Do you guys have any trains here that uh, recirculate throughout this building? Um, we do have trains. We can move any of these trains out. As you can see, they're all in particular bays. And if we need to move the trains because we're doing an event or we want to bring in a new exhibit, we will do that as well. Uh, for example, in May, we are going to focus, do a special exhibit on World War I. So we will probably bring our Merci car, which is the French gratitude car that the French gave to all 50 states, but we have the car for the state of Maryland, and we will bring it in here uh, over the Memorial Day weekend. And this was a car filled with French goodies uh, saying thank you to the Americans, and it has the original shields that many people don't get to see, and it will, it will come in. So that's an example of rotating. Uh, so you just mentioned um, an event that's coming up in May. Do you guys have any other events that are coming up in 2019? Uh, we have many events in 2019 and in fact we're trying to actually do even more creative events. So we have of course our favorite signature one in April is Thomas the Tank Engine is coming back which is always a kid's favorite. We have the Polar Express at the end of the year which is just magical. Uh, but then we also are bringing three temporary exhibits, uh, special behind the scenes exhibits. So our first one will be in February for our Black History Month. We'll be bringing uh, pictures that the B&O had painted of African Americans and the roles they served on the railroad. And we will bring those out from behind the scenes and put them on view. In May, as I said, we'll be focusing on the World War I and memorabilia collections that we have that people don't normally get to see highlighting because the railroad employees were some of the first to go off and fight and people don't realize that, that they served in the war and what they brought back. And then our third exhibit will be in August and September and it will be about the railroad police. Again, a lot of people don't realize there were railroad police. The B&O had the first set and uh, we're going to be bringing out some of their uniforms, things that people don't normally see and that will coincide with the opening of our first mile stable. And then my very last question is, what is your favorite train here? What is my favorite train? Well, my, one of my favorite exhibits is the Tom Thumb because it shows, you know, it shows, it highlights invention. Peter Cooper thought, you know, we could have an engine that could race the horse and maybe we should start moving, uh, moving into actually these types of equipment, trains. So he built an engine, had one constructed, the innovation, and raced the horse. The engine almost won, and right at the end, it's, you know, something broke, but it actually, even though it lost that race, it won the war, the proverbial war, so to speak, because people realized these engines are very viable. So there was, you know, invention. Peter Cooper's also the one who invented Jell-O. And, you know, this is how the world, America was created by invention. And we are also, what I also like is the fact that it featured the horses and horses were very integral to railroads at the very beginning. And we at the B&O are, are uniting the present with the past. We are building stables along our first mile of track ever laid. We are building the first mile stables for the Baltimore City Mounted Police Unit. So they will now reside on our campus. And that's actually, you know, we used to have stables. So we're bringing horses back and we're helping the police. So it's a good thing. And we are going to have a train stop so people can actually see the horses. See, I really like that because I ride um, both like at home and at my college. Oh, really? Where do you go to school? I go to Bridgewater College in Virginia. Excellent. Excellent. Well, that's great. My daughter's an equestrian as well, but that's exactly right. It connects people to the railroads in ways that they didn't realize uh, by their interest area. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate you all coming here. Also, thanks for watching our show. Be sure to follow and subscribe down below. And if you have any suggestions on places for us to explore, please visit the website in the description below. Until next time, have a happy holiday.